We all know that the final common hurdle for any IVF cycle is embryo implantation. Doctors are good at making embryos. We can give you injections, grow lots of eggs. Embryologists are good at converting those eggs into embryos. And then we put the embryo back in your uterus, which is called an embryo transfer. So up till that point, everything is usually hunky-dory. But after we transfer the embryo into the uterus, whether that embryo will implant, whether it will stick is not something which anyone in the world can control. Because embryo implantation is a complex biological process. It's an intricate dance, hormonal signals between the embryo which is growing, between the endometrium which needs to receive it, and there's very little which we can do to influence that. A lot of it, it, lot of it quite honestly, is just a black box area. And because we cannot control it, once we've transferred an embryo back into the uterus, we don't know what's going to happen to it. That's the sad truth. Sad to the extent that even though the embryo quality may be perfect, it's a top quality blastocyst, your endometrium may look beautiful, the transfer is smooth, we still can't be sure whether the embryo will implant. And this sometimes creates a problem, partly because patients have very unrealistic expectations. They say, oh, the doctor put a top quality blastocyst, the endometrium is fine, the doctor is very optimistic, hopeful, positive, and they expect that they're going to get pregnant. But remember, an embryo is not a baby. Once we've made the embryo and put it back inside, we have no control. And that's why you need to have realistic expectations. And that's why you need to understand that we cannot predict whether an embryo will become a baby. Sometimes top quality embryos don't become babies and sometimes not very good looking embryos also end up implanting. So understand the limitations of medical technology and science. And no matter whether you use time-lapse videography, no matter whether you use PGT, to do an embryo biopsy to check the genetics of the embryo, no matter whether you do an endometrial receptivity assay to check whether the endometrium is receptive or not. Once you put the embryo back in the uterus, we have no control. And wasting money on all these expensive tests does not increase your chance of getting pregnant. So you need to be humble, you need to be realistic, you need to find a good doctor who will share the honest truth with you, who will tell you, really, every time you put it, embryo back in the uterus, it's now a matter of luck whether it will work or not. Think of it as buying a lottery ticket. Yes, it's an expensive ticket, but the more the times you buy the lottery ticket, the better your chance of getting pregnant. But you know what? It's a lottery ticket whether you do it in the IVF lab or whether you do it in the bedroom. And just like every fertile couple doesn't get pregnant every month, they have tried to have a baby. That's true in the IVF clinic as well. So the good news also is that just because one cycle has failed, doesn't mean that the next cycle will fail. You're starting off all over again. It's a new cycle. And that's why you need to be well informed. That's why you need to have photographs of your embryos. That's why you need to ask questions and make sure the documentation is good. So that irrespective of whether the embryo implants or not, you have peace of mind that you receive good quality medical care, that the doctor transferred a top quality blastocyst into a receptive endometrium. And then all you can do is be patient and pray and keep your fingers crossed. I hope this was helpful and as an IVF doctor, I take pride in sharing my knowledge with IVF patients to help you get the best possible medical care. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us and we'll be happy to create a video to answer your questions.